Welcome to How to Become a Production Database Administrator. My name is Raphael. In this course to SQL Administration, we begin with understanding what a domain is. And let's start. A domain is a, con a computer network in which all the user accounts, computers, printers, and all the security principles are registered in what we call a central database, which is the Active Directory. And that is actually located on a server that's been promoted to AD. A standalone server obviously is not part of a domain. So let's uh, continue and I'll explain this in a little more detail. Now we're gonna look at this slide, which is a part of non-domain uh, computers. You'll notice we have three separate computers, computer A, B, and C, and they're sharing the resources separately. The printer here, printer here, and printer here. And when you have a non-domain computer, the disadvantage is that if a user comes in and we register him in here, he cannot access this computer, nor can he access this computer, and nor can he access these two printers. Uh, the advantage of domain is that we basically create an Active Directory domain server, which manages all the user accounts. And now when we create a domain, any user from any computer can come in and log into any computer. And we'll see that graphically in the next illustration right here. So what is a domain? You'll notice a domain is a, uh, is a network of computers and resources, and it's controlled by what's called the domain controller. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna demonstrate that to you in a second, is I'm gonna take a Windows 2012 operating system, and then I'm gonna promote it to what's called domain controller. And then this server, this operating system, will now become the domain controller and have a domain. Now, any computers within that domain can share resources. And now if a user comes to computer A and he logs on, and if he wants to log on to B, he can. If he logs on to C, he can, because the Active Directory has his user account information held here rather than individually in each computer. So that's the great advantage of having a domain that you can share resources. And as you, any user within that domain can go to any computer and log on and do his work. So if this, comp if this computer D here, as you can see, he is not part of this domain. So if he wanted to come in and access this, we would have to actually just create a user and bring him in like this. And now once he's part of a domain, he can share the resources. And again, he can go to computer A and log on, computer B and log on, and computer C and log on. Now, obviously, I'm being very simplistic in my description because this is a not a networking class. But you get the idea that within a domain, there is one major computer called the domain controller, and it controls all the resources. Therefore, all these computers and resources can share and view each other with permission permitting. So a shared resource within the domain, each user can log on using any workstation and pr can print to that shared printer. Now, what is virt VM virtualization, VMware virtualization? The reason I'm mentioning is that because now that we're gonna install SQL 2012 Enterprise Edition uh, server, it needs to be on a Windows 2012 server. Now obviously your laptop will not have that operating system. It may have anything from Windows 10 below, and it really needs a Windows 2012 operating system. So this basically allows you to create a virtual environment where I'll install the operating system, promote it to a, a, a DC or a domain controller, install the Windows uh, SQL 2012 Enterprise Edition, and then we can see how to install SQL Server properly. So this is what we're gonna be doing in the next coming few videos. So what is virtualization? VMware is a software a virtual package that installs on an operating system as an application. And now with this application, we can create multiple independent virtual machines with different operating systems such as Windows, Ubuntu, Linux, and Sol uh, Solaris. And so let me illustrate that here. Now, when you have a virtualized environment you have one major computer, if you will, or major server, and that has a tremendous amount of memory, uh, a tremendous amount of resources. And in that, we're gonna create what's called virtual uh, machines or VMs. So we create a virtual machine, which I'll be demonstrating to you. And then on that virtual machi machine, which is a self-contained environment, it's independent of the host, and it's independent of, of your operating system. So for example, when I do create a virtual machine with Windows operating system, 
And if a virus, for example, affected that uh, virtual machine, it will not harm your underlining host computer, which is your laptop, if you will, because it's a separate entity. Same thing here. You can create another virtual machine with a different operating system and so on. So you can even create many virtual machines up to whatever the resources allows you to do. Now we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna need three things to install in the next coming videos. We're gonna need the workstation. Uh, we're gonna download the workstation. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna obviously install the virtual, uh, the evaluation of SQL 2012 Enterprise Edition. And then we're also gonna install the Windows Server R2 operating system on this workstation. So it does not affect your um, operating system whatsoever. So next videos, we're going to be uh, concentrating on these entities, and I'll be showing you how to do, the, do that step by step. And the whole purpose of this is that when you, in, when you install SQL 2012 Enterprise Edition, it requires an operating system that you may not have on your, uh, uh, on your uh, laptop, most likely, or your desktop. So therefore, I'm going to create a virtual environment. And in that virtual environment, I'm going to create a virtual machine. Then I'm going to install the operating system, uh, Windows 2012 operating system. And on that, and I'm going to apply the uh, SQL application enterprise edition. So this is the reason why we're going to do some several steps even before we get to installing SQL server. And as a production SQL database administrator, you'll see that there's a few th uh, things that you need to do prior to installing SQL. It's not as easy, it's relatively easy, but it's not as easy as the SQL Express we did on the first course. And I encourage you to look at that. So I'll leave it here. And this will all become, obviously, as I always say, a little more clearer as we demonstrate it. And so I'll see you in the next video where we're going to go to the various sites to download the applications. And then we'll start beginning uh, designing a virtual environment. This is Raphael. And this is how to become a production SQL database, database administrator course SQL administration.